Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Lacey from NaturallyModernLife.com where I like to talk about sustainably living in sync with the seasons, raising little nature lovers, and the magic of a handmade home. So today I'm going to be talking about the basics of composting and I'm so excited because I love the topic of composting. So if you've been thinking about reducing your waste or your impact on the planet, chances are you've come across the idea and consider starting composting. If you have not ever done it before, I'm here to tell you that you do not have to be intimidated. I'm in a really small space, so we're in an apartment with an apartment um, sort of patio and balcony outside, but it's just a really little rectangle, square maybe, <laughs> and we have a small compost there, but I've even had piles when we were on like larger bits, with, uh, a larger house with property, so there are definitely quite a few options, and we're gonna talk about them today, as well as show you my outside compost that I have going now on our apartment balcony. So there are several types of composting methods and I'm just going to name a few. The most common one is aerobic composting. This can be done in a pile, like a static pile. You might see someone have one outside in their backyard or it might be in a vessel like we have. We have a storage bin or even the ones where you spin and turn those containers. That's a vessel compost. So what that does is it, um, when you turn it or you aerate it or you mix it up, whatever the process is, you're allowing oxygen and air to get to the food scraps and everything in there and it helps it break down a lot quicker. Now the next type of composting is anaerobic. Why can't I say that? It's anaerobic <laughs> composting. And so as the word implies, it's the opposite of... <laughs> It's the opposite of aerobic composting. I don't know why I'm having such difficulty with these words. <laughs> aerobic and anaerobic composting. So what is the opposite of the other where air and oxygen is not introduced to it? This is usually what happens in a landfill and it's not what you're looking for. Most importantly, it produces methane and you'll know because it has a smell. A very, very, very bad smell. So if your home compost is starting to smell like trash, then you know it's not getting enough air, it's not getting turned enough, it probably has too much green or wet material in it, which we'll get to in just a little bit. Okay, so another type of composting is vermicomposting, and we also have one of these. We have two composts. We have the outside vessel aerobic <laughs> composting and the inside vermicomposting. Some vermicomposts can be outside. It depends on how hot or cold it gets in your area. In our area, it gets extremely hot, so we do not want to put our worms outside in some type of container where it might get even hotter inside. But what that does is it uses worms. Typically you will have like your red wiggler worms are the most uh, common, but there are different types of worms that could be used, as well as different types of insects and larvae and things that could go into composting. So black soldier fly larvae are uh, another way of composting as well. But we'll just stick to earthworms. Vermicomposting. Basically, your worms eat your organic scraps. They will eat anything like eggshells, paper, coffee grounds, although you don't want to do too much of one or the other because they're living in their environment and so their habitat needs to have the correct pH. Sometimes your worms will start crawling out or different things will happen and that's usually an indicator that the soil pH is off balance. Fun fact, my mom is a worm farmer. She's actually had worm farms and raised worms most of my life. So I grew up basically with my hands like elbow deep in worm castings, which looks a lot like really rich, beautiful soil and is in fact worm poop. So if you didn't know that, it's great, great, great for your plants. You have the castings, which is like fertilizer. You also have the worm tea that kind of comes from it. So it's like the liquid fertilizer. So many great things from vermicomposting. It's definitely great. The one downside is that it doesn't happen really fast. So you may need to have different sources for collecting your compost. If vermicomposting is gonna be what you do, you might wanna have an outside compost or you might wanna have a drop off with like a CSA or a farmer's market because your worms won't eat everything like citrus they don't really like citrus um, and they might not eat it as quickly as you need them to eat it okay so moving on the next one I really hope I say this correctly I've not had good luck with words today bokashi 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 that's kind of fun I hope I said it correctly this is a Japanese word and it's a technique that means fermented organic matter 
So basically, there are two stages. There is the pickling or fermenting stage, and then there is the burying in the ground stage. And it's something that I haven't tried yet, but I would love to try in the future. I think it sounds super, super cool. So instead of composting and breaking down in the way that it would in your typical compost, it ferments, and so you kind of end up with this really packed fermented like layers, maybe. Um, look it up online. I haven't tried it, I haven't done um, I don't know a whole lot about it, but it's super, super interesting. So that is something to consider. Maybe that would work with vermicomposting, or maybe that would work with another type of composting, or maybe that's all you need. I don't know, because I haven't tried, but totally worth looking into. Another type of composting that we don't typically think or maybe isn't in the same category, but is equally as helpful if you can hack it or if you have access to it, animals. So if you or you know someone who has chickens or a rabbit or goats or maybe a pig, that can be a way that you can take some food scraps and repurpose them or feed them or compost them, right? Because it, it will break down and turn into fertilizer. So um, for a while we had a nature sanctuary here that had a pig and we would go and feed the pig, all sorts of things. It was really great because if there was something that I didn't really want to put in my compost for fear of animals maybe sniffing it out or my off balance or something, there was always somewhere else for it to go. Now our CSA that delivers our food weekly has chickens, so oftentimes we can send some of our compost there with them. So we have typically have quite a few outlets for compost, but it's taken us a while to figure all of them out and find all of them. All right, so that is what I have for different methods you could explore for composting and one that you should not. So that would be the one that is opposite of oxygen and does not get turned and is in the landfill, super smelly. Okay, <laughs> so let me show you our apartment balcony compost. So ours is in a storage bin with locks on the side. It's kind of like in the handles. And I like that just to be sure we are in an apartment. I don't want to attract anything. Don't want anything to get in there, so I keep it locked. It has holes drilled along the side. The smaller, the better, but as many as you can get. Not on top, because if it rains or if water gets in it, it's gonna flood your compost. Now composting is relatively basic. What you want are equal parts dry or brown and equal parts green or wet. So you can think of wet as food scraps like fresh veggies and fruits and things that are green and kind of juicy. They're wet, leaves, things like that. Dry would be paper, it would be dry leaves, branches, things that are dry. That would be brown, dry, green, wet. So you basically just want a mixture of that and you'll mix everything together. What I'll do with our comp apartment compost is about once a day, maybe every other day depending, I will take our compost out, I will put it into the compost, and I will put some brown and maybe a little bit of soil. You don't have to do the soil, but it does kind of help if you're just trying to make sure everything's covered up nicely. Put it in there. If you can mix it up right away, by all means do that. But sometimes I find that once you put a lot of paper in there, it's kind of hard to mix up. So close it up, wait a few hours, maybe even to the next day. The paper's gonna absorb some of that moisture and it'll be a little bit easier to mix it all up. So what's really important is that you mix it up regularly every time that you're getting it in there and you're getting a good equal amount of wet and dry. To me, it's very much like baking where you are baking to consistency or you're looking for the right consistency. Now, I absolutely love composting. I think it is just a beautiful and wonderful offering back to the earth, but also a wonderful lesson in slowing down and savoring the journey, really appreciating learning and that learning process. Now, you might have a few questions about what you can compost and what you can't compost. So, relatively easy. Anything that would break down that is organic matter, typically you can compost. So fruit and veggie scraps, eggshells, coffee grounds, paper, any trimmings, vegetable trimmings would work. If you are using only natural like cotton, if you could use that dryer lint, although I would probably refrain from using dryer lint if it's got synthetic material in it. 
You could also do fingernail clippings and hair trimmings and there's actually a book about it called Compost Do. It's a children's book but it's beautiful and wonderful and it pretty much tells you all of this. If your tea bags are compostable, you could put those in it. Once you've cleaned out your garden, all of them can go back in there. You can feed it right back to the earth. So what should you not compost? Dairy or animal products, meat, bones, things like that. Technically, they are compostable. They do biodegrade and break down. The only problem with that is that if you put them in there, they might attract things that you don't want coming in. So especially us being in an apartment, I try to keep those things out. You should avoid fats and oils and definitely pet and human waste. So we had our apartment compost on our balcony in a storage bin and that storage bin went into a storage shelf. What was really great about that is that it was pretty much secret. You just closed the lid and it was done. No one knew it was there. People would come over and sit right on top of it and had no idea where our compost was at. So I've since moved it out of there because with the compost that we've made over the past year, I decided that I would grow some things. So I started growing quite a few things sort of in that storage bench. We've got some bits of corn and squash and some beans and some different herbs, a few tomatoes, a loofah, um, some strawberries, all kind of out on our balcony. And I will show you a little bit of that as well. All right, everyone, so I hope that this was really helpful for you and that if you had any reservations or fears or a little bit intimidated about composting, I hope this totally calmed them down and that you feel completely confident to get out there and get your hands dirty.